Hello, we live, do we not, in an age when originality is very thin on the ground, and remakes, reboots and reimaginings beset us from all sides. Now, it is pretty unusual for a remake to be as good as the original movie. It is very unusual for a remake to be better than the original movie, but it does happen from time to time. Let's talk about some. Here are five remakes that are better than the originals. Now, this is not, of course, an exhaustive list uh, to be that. I would have to have seen all the remakes ever made, and I haven't. For example, my better half, Kathy, tells me that Some Like It Hot is a superior remake of a French movie uh, whose title I forget and which I haven't seen. So can't really comment on that. But I can comment on these. These are just the, literally the first five that came into my head in no particular order of preference. Number one. The Fly. There are so many things I like about David Cronenberg's film of The Fly. It's the movie which established Jeff Goldblum as a leading man. It's possibly the single most visceral body horror movie ever made, with one possible exception, which is also in my list. But what I really like about it is it kind of follows in the tradition of what the movie brats were doing 10 years previously in the 70s. The movie brats basically invented the modern blockbuster by revisiting the favourite genres of their youth, specifically science fiction, creature feature and gangster movie, and taking what had been considered pulpy genres, but taking them really seriously and making them into like cinematic epics. Hence Star Wars, Jaws and The Godfather. And what Cronenberg's doing here is he's taking a very pulpy old sci-fi movie with a very pulpy sci-fi idea, specifically what happens if a man gets into a teleporter machine and accidentally takes a fly with him. And rather than going the sort of pulpy sci-fi route of the original, i.e. they swap heads, he actually examines the unbelievably grim biological reality of what would actually happen if you did this. The man and the fly get fused at a genetic level and slowly mutate into this unbelievably appalling thing which is neither man nor fly. It's not an easy watch, but it is an extraordinary bit of filmmaking. Only Cronenberg could have done it. Only Cronenberg should have done it. Number two, Cape Fear. Now, Cape Fear probably treats its subject matter more respectfully than any of the other films on my list. For example, it reuses Elmer Bernstein's theme tune from the 1961 uh, original version. Bam, 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 bam. What really distinguishes Cape Fear from its predecessors, two things. One, it's a bit more morally complex. In the first one, the hero is a heroic lawyer played by Gregory Peck and he's completely morally impeccable because of course he is, because it's Gregory Peck playing a lawyer. It's Atticus Finch for Christ's sake. Now the equivalent character in the remake is played by Nick Nolte, but he's on slightly shakier moral ground. In the first movie, the heroic lawyer heroically testifies against the evil serial rapist and has him put away. Now, in the remake, the lawyer character was supposed to defend the evil serial rapist at trial, but upon realising just how evil he was, he doesn't get him off on a technicality, although the possibility was there to do so. Which, while morally the right thing to do, is professionally very questionable. And the evil serial rapist character is altogether more terrifying in the sequel. In the first one, it's Robert Mitchum and he's doing his good blank-eyed menace thing. In the second one, it's Robert De Niro and he is just pure nightmare juice. It's the most terrifying he's ever been and it's about as terrifying as anybody's ever been. Number three, the invasion of the body snatchers, specifically the 1978 Philip Kaufman version. There have been, I think, at least three, possibly four versions of this movie. Uh, Abel Ferrara did one in the 90s just called Body Snatchers, which is okay. And I seem to recall that there's a movie called Invasion, which came out in the naughty starring Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman. And I think that might be another Body Snatchers remake. Haven't seen it, can't comment. But I have seen the original 1956 Don Siegel version, and I've seen this. And the original 1956 Don Siegel version is a wonderful bit of paranoid Cold War era science fiction. But the 70s one is just the creepiest, most paranoia inducing thing you've ever seen. It's got such a wonderfully kind of numb and hollow sense of encroaching dread. And of course, one of the best last shots in cinema history. You may notice there's a bit of a preponderance of horror movies in this list. It does seem to be the case that horror movies do seem to get remade more than anything else. Wonder why that is. But by way of a bit of light relief, number four, 
Ocean's Eleven. Now, the original Ocean's Eleven, starring Frank Sinatra and his Vegas Rat Pack pals, was pretty good fun, but it was ultimately a bit smug and self-indulgent and didn't really have much of a story. Steven Soderbergh's remake, by contrast, is incredibly slick, incredibly cool, incredibly exciting, incredibly funny, and just wonderfully entertaining. And then they made a sequel that was incredibly smug and self-indulgent and didn't really have a story. Before I name the last film on my list, quick dishonourable mention to Gus Van Sant's recreation of Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. This film isn't so much bad as just completely pointless. As you probably know, rather than it just being a remake of Psycho, or indeed another adaptation of Robert Bloch's novel, it is a painstaking shot-for-shot, line-for-line, edit-for-edit recreation of Alfred Hitchcock's original 1960 film. And as such, it is completely redundant. Because if you haven't seen Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, the fact that this film reproduces it shot-for-shot is neither here nor there. And if you have seen Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, you have no reason whatsoever to see this film. Because you've already seen it in a better version. Okay, final one on the list, John Carpenter's The Thing. Now this is an interesting one on many levels because it's only really a remake because it says it is. Obviously remake is not a very specific term and one could argue about certain films whether they're remakes or not. Sometimes, for example, you'll have a later film which has the same title and the same story as an earlier film, but it's because they're both adaptations of the same novel. For example, Red Dragon is not really a remake of Manhunter, they're just both adaptations of Thomas Harris's novel Red Dragon. 2006's Casino Royale is in no way a remake of 1967's Casino Royale, and thank heavens for that. This is further complicated in the modern world by the fact that we live in the age of the endless superhero reboot. Spider-Man has now been rebooted twice in the last 10 years. Batman has been rebooted like four or five times since the 80s and we're told is about to be again. But these movies are not really remakes of each other, although you get the same plot points turning up in a lot of them for obvious reasons. They're just endless reworkings of the same source material. But The Thing is an interesting one. It presents itself as a remake of 1951's The Thing from Another World. It uses some of the title, and it also recreates the title card in the opening sequence. But John Carpenter's movie of The Thing actually sticks far more closely to the source material for the first movie than the first movie did, this being a science fiction short story called Who Goes There? In the original movie, they really only kept the idea of a bunch of scientists at the pole finding a frozen alien in the ice and thawing it out, and it then causes chaos. But thereafter, it becomes a fairly straightforward monster movie. Now, the form that the alien menace takes in John Carpenter's movie, that it's a, a shape-shifting contagion that's slowly absorbing and taking over the human scientists one at a time, that is taken from the source novel. It wasn't in the previous film. Whether the thing is a remake or not, it's one of the best horror movies ever. It probably has the most outrageous analog horror effects ever committed to celluloid. It's unbearably tense. It's genuinely funny when it needs to be. You gotta be fucking kidding. And it has a magnificently ambiguous ending. And yes, I know that about 10 years ago there was another remake of The Thing which is very much presented as a remake of John Carpenter's movie. Haven't seen it, haven't heard anything good about it. Well, there you go. There's five remakes that I think most people would agree surpassed the original film. Can you think of some? Stick them in the comments if you can. See you soon. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please hit like and share. If you'd like to see more, please hit subscribe. And if you'd like to help me make more, please visit patreon.com slash mitchben.